article, which is half of Americans over 55 may retire poor. And I, I'd like to take that may retire poor and just say will retire poor because I believe that totally to be true. I'm going to tell you exactly why. So this is actually an opinion piece. This is from Howard Gold. He's one of the writers there for Market Watch. And he just invests or he just interviews a couple of economists. And one of them is economist Teresa Gillarducci, a professor at the New School the new school in New York City. I don't know that's right. And one of the nation's leading experts on retirement. And she said that half, that's right, half of Americans age 55 will retire in poverty or near poverty. She states our data is showing that because of the COVID uh, recession, about 50% of workers over the age of 55 will be poor or near poor when they reach 65 years old. And then they define what actually poor is if they're living on less than 20,000 a year. She told me, I think that's what we could all agree that means chronic deprivation for the rest of your life. Now, I don't know where exactly that you are. Some places, $20,000 is a boatload of money. And some places, it's not that much. So it just really just depends on your cost of living, where you're at, and what are your needs at that point. And the author goes on to say something kind of odd. He says, uh, if this happens, it would it would reverse decades of progress toward eliminating poverty among the elderly. So uh, it just got me confused because if you don't know, uh, military, I was, I was in the military, medic, became a nurse, did a lot of things with, with home health care. And this was like when I, when I was in my 20s. Uh, now I'm in my late 40s and I can just tell you that all those years that I spent over there, I would see nothing but poverty. Uh, there was the majority of our patients were either... Uh, I mean, everybody has, you know, Medicare at that point, but a lot of our patients were on Medicaid. And Medicaid, if you're not familiar in, in America, uh, when you reach a certain level or cannot maintain a threshold of a certain amount of income, you can be put on a healthcare service called Medicaid and it's for low income individuals and it covers a lot of things and it's really a lifesaver or a raft for a lot of people. And what I would see as time went on, I would just start to see that the patients that I, that were, I was seeing was starting to get poorer and poorer and poorer and the things that they were able to afford wasn't that much. And I just didn't see what this guy's seeing uh, as far as like uh, reverse decades of progress towards limiting poverty. I saw nothing but poverty. And it was pretty sad to see uh, people who were at this point in their life where they should be, you know, having that, they're living out their golden years. They were literally just what you, what you uh, I've heard before, deciding between do I pay for uh, food or do I pay for this blood pressure pill? And I've had many a discussion with different patients about what they should do. Now, we would work with social workers and they, I mean, that, that's not the point. The point is, is that we would see a lot of poverty and it's on the rise. That's all I can say. It goes on. So what's behind this? People losing their jobs and health insurance because of COVID-19 or losing the employer match on their 401k contributions or having to tap into retirement savings to cover all these expenses. And the economist says it's all the above. It starts with job losses. Older workers are losing their jobs at a faster rate relative to younger people. And that's the thing. I mean, if you are a corporation, a business, and you got an option here to hire somebody who is, and there is this thing called ageism. Uh, you cannot discriminate based on age, sex, color, religion, everything like that. But it happens all the time. If a corporation says, hey, we have a job opening, and we have a person who's maybe a little older in middle management, we can move them up, but we're going to have to pay them more, or we could pay somebody uh, maybe 30% less who is uh, young, younger and hungry and can do a bunch of different things. Some, a lot of times they hire the younger person because they can uh, get away with it and they can pay less. And that's the whole thing about corporations. It's the bottom line. And that's the problem. I mean, if you're waiting for um, your retirement, your pension to, to cover you, those are the old days. Those days don't exist anymore. It's very rare to see pensions kind of come about. And then but talking about, you know, personal finances, it's very, because you're going to have to dip into all those things. You're going to need a lot of money as you get older. That's the big thing. And when older workers lose their jobs, they lose access to savings, they lose their employer's contribution, and they face a temptation of drawing down their retirement assets. And it's the same thing that I would see all the time. They're like, well, I'm going to dip into my retirement, dip into my retirement. Now what happened? They're talking about contribution to 401k. When I was going through, they would contribute, you know, a pretty good chunk. Uh, it actually, they would match me one to one, whatever I put in my 401k, they would match. This is different companies that I worked for over the years. But they, there was a statistic here. It said in 2009, 20% of employers stopped contributing to the 401k so the employers so they wouldn't match you but now over 50 percent of employers have stopped contributing to the 401k because they learned they could get away with it i don't know if that's really a wise practice because as i understood it you could contribute to the 401k and it would be like a tax uh, write-off but maybe not i guess these companies want to save as much money as they possibly can anyhow here's one of the problems that i see because of the retirement accounts that are out there especially like your 401ks or your ira or stuff like that you cannot take or you cannot withdraw if you are under 59 and a half. So if you're 55 and just waiting for that time, if you take it out, 
you actually have a big penalty. But because of this CARES Act that was just uh, passed, they removed the 10% penalties on withdrawals up to 100,000 from those accounts for people under that age. So, but here's the big thing. It allows them to pay back the money over a three year period. And if you don't, you will get that 10% penalty put right back on. So this is one of those issues with like people going, hey, I can dip into my, my retirement accounts, my IRAs. No. I mean, you can, but you have to pay everything back within three years. And if you don't, you get you get penalized. So it's one of those things where like you're losing every time you take out your own money, which kind of sucks. So here's the here's the recommendation from The Economist. She says, don't quit your job. If you're older and you're afraid of the virus, get a hazmat suit. And I was like, I read that and I go, oh my God, that is the worst. Just, can you imagine? I mean, you, you have to decide between your health or working. I mean, depending on where you're at, right? So it's just, and I've, it's, a, it's an awful decision to make. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. All these things that we just talked about, with talking about Bitcoin and the different opportunities that are available and the market that's going to, you know, potentially take a big dip, that's okay. Because that dips, then I'll have the ability to buy it up. And you don't have to buy up like tens of thousands of dollars. I'm not saying to buy one Bitcoin when it when it reaches 9,000. That's 9,000 bucks. That's a lot of, I can't do that. So I'm just saying, when it dips a little bit, what I will be doing is buying those little dips in small increments because I don't want to FOMO in and put a thousand dollars into it. Maybe it's a hundred bucks. Maybe it's 25. It's whatever you have. But the big thing here is not to lose sight of what it could potentially be. And that is the big thing. But there's another another part to this, and that is your taxes. And I've talked about this many a time. Let's say you're able to build a nice little nest egg of, let's say, 500000 You put in $50,000 over, over, over this, this time, over the next however much time it's taken you, and then it starts to balloon or inflate to half a million or maybe even a even million dollars worth of cryptocurrency. So if that happens, guess what? guess what happens to you? You're going to get dinged and you're going to have to pay taxes on those capital gains taxes, uh, depending on how long it is. It could be sizable. Right now, it's between 15 and 25 percent right now. I don't know who's going to win the presidency coming up, but uh, expect it to change, especially with the quantitative easing, because you're going to have to tax people and you're going to, you're going to have to get revenue from some point. And it's not going to be just out of thin air again. It's going to be from people like you and me who are paying a boatload of taxes. So this is what I'm afraid of. Also, on top of that, uh, for the next year, 2020, when you file your taxes, you're going to see this this uh, this little comment here, this thing I've been harping on before. If any time did you receive sell sent exchange or any kind of virtual currency, and if you don't say yes, uh, those exchanges that you go to, they got your information, they're going to send it to you. Do not shoot the messenger. I'm just saying that is what is happening. So I'm going to leave you with this. There is a video I made. It talks about not paying crypto taxes. I refuse to pay an exorbitant amount of taxes if I have the opportunity not to do so legally. And that's the big thing. So again, if you had a traditional IRA or you have an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, TSB, 457, whatever it is, you can move it into a crypto IRA and you can do trades within it at uh, zero to, low, to no fees, which is pretty awesome. This is who I use personally. I trust capital. I put and I'm going to max out every year the maximum amount, which I believe is 6000 I think I've reached my threshold. So $6,000 I'm putting in and you can invest into these types of cryptocurrencies into an IRA because here's the thing. Once you put that money into it, let's say you put ten thousand dollars in a uh, in a cryptocurrency, whatever this is, and you say, "Hey, I'm putting in the whatever Ethereum," and Ethereum goes bananas, and all of a sudden you've got a million dollars worth of Ethereum. Well, guess what? You're gonna be taxed on all those gains. But if you do it with an IRA, you're not taxing those gains. And I talk about all those different options, the legal options, in this video. I'm gonna link at the very end. So to get a month for free. I have a link in the description of every one of my videos. It looks exactly like this. Click on this link. It is an affiliate link, but you will get one month for free of iTrust Capital. And if you just have questions after you watch that, that video that I'm going to leave, leave to you, just click right here and click schedule a call. They can do you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes to answer all your questions and get through them, which is pretty amazing, right? Just to actually be able to talk to a live person, what well, actually happens here, which is fantastic. That's it for that. There are some different pitfalls that we just saw and we took a look at that article about retiring poor. Remember, it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep over the long haul. And that's why I talk about using a service, something like this with iTrust Capital. And look, there's other companies out there that do the exact same thing for a cryptocurrency 
IRAs. It's just that I looked at other ones, I did not like them. And this is the one that I went with, and it's my personal choice. So I give you the option and you can check it out and do whatever you wanna do. All right, so that's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking with me. But before we take off, just wanna do random shout outs. So thanks everybody who signed up for Digital Asset News, really appreciate it. Uh, here's Steve Ehrlich, could be the CEO of uh, Voyager, who knows? Uh, Chris Castillo, PacBid, Crypto Fastland, that's a good one. Frankster, Joey Serena, Bill Ennis, Chuck C, Chuck C, I like that one, and then Dreamer. So thanks everybody for signing up, I really appreciate it. If you like those videos, I'm gonna put two more up uh, that you could uh, check out. There's gonna be one definitely I need to put up there, which was talks about no crypto taxes, which I think is important. And uh, that's it for today. So uh, thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. Super appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.